everyone, you are welcome to Career Talk Show. I am Nalo Yoyonke Abiba. Today we are going to talk about rape. You see, this rape is actually, it's really disheartening and very sad hearing so many terrible news and events on the recent trend that has hit up the society. It is called, I can call it an immoral act, a shameful act and even an unacceptable behavior in the society. In fact, it is an animalistic behavior. Today with me here, I have to guess uh, which we are going to rub minds together on the topic rape. In the house today, I have two guests who will be interacting on the issue of rape. Why don't you sit down and relax as we go on with our interaction? You are welcome back to the show. I will allow my guests to introduce themselves to you. Now, over to you, my guest. Good day, everyone. My name is Jonadi Abilaku. I'm a writer and at the same time, I'm humanitarian. Hello, everyone. My name is Adeola Dipokela Kinsola, a psychologist, a health practitioner, and a humanitarian. You're welcome. You are welcome once again to the show, Ms. Adeola and Ms. Jola Ade. Now, today, concerning uh, what is trending in our society, uh, we are talking about rape, right? We are talking about rape. Um, can we say, let me first, let me ask first, why do men rape? Why do men rape? Why like, do men rape? Is there a strict answer to that? I don't think so. Yes, there are a lot of point factors to what we are talking about. Is it the immorality? Is it the culture? When we're talking about culture, we're talking about the position of men in our society. It gives them dominance. And dominance can either be right or wrong. So when the dominance is right, you know what happens. And when the dominance is wrong, you know what happens. Oh, what do you think? Oh, uh, what do you think? Oh, Why do you marry? Honestly, that thing is still baffles me a lot. I don't know. Maybe it's me, but I um thought about it severely and I think the way these people are brought up is one of the factors. Like she has said earlier, the culture and all. And most especially these people who are their mentors, who had their own women. Because I don't know. For someone to wake up in the morning and say, okay, this person I'm looking at, I have to overcome this person, I have to rape this person. That means something must have gone gone on somewhere. So, well, I don't know, maybe just for their own sexual gratification or because they, they feel they have to dominate. Okay, uh, excuse me, Diola, we are saying what you are trying to say is, it, um, is sexual gratification the common goal of rapist or, or what? To a certain because? extent, to a large extent, I think sexual gratification goes a long way. Goes a long way. Because, and... Yes, because. I don't think someone in his right senses or right mind just think, let me, let me, let me just rape this person for raping sake. For raping sake, yes. like. Okay, well, sorry, I'm sorry. sorry to cut in. When we are talking about sexual gratification, I would like to ask what sexual education, what sex education did the individual in person had, either when they were young or when they were growing up or now they, that they are grown? Because we see people of 80 years old, 70, boys down to boys of young men, 20 years old, 25 years old, 27 years old, doing what we are saying. Some are even in, don't tell me, aside the teenagers that you could say they are not too enlightened, some are not more uh, minors, sorry. Some are young men that have a sense of responsibility. So to speak, yeah, no, 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 yeah, right, yeah. so what were they thinking sexually right from going to the So place? what you're trying to tell me that are they psychotic in nature or did they need a psychiatric evaluation from afar in order to, I don't know how to put this, just trying to Actually, say. Actually, uh, when, when you're talking about psychiatric evaluation, if we go out there and pick 10 people at random, then you know that a lot of things happen um, below the clothes. Below the clothes, okay. So, so many things happen in the closet yeah. that is not even open to the outside exactly. world. Okay, yeah, and, yeah, and you said something like domineering figure. Also, the other also said about domineering figure. Uh, who, is, who is actually, you actually talked about who is 
teaching these uh, particular rapists, let me call them rapists, who is their mentor? I mean, who are their mentor? Who mentor them? Like, who is their, who is doing as an, who is a godfather? Can I say a godfather to them? I don't think there is anything like sexual education in Africa, sorry to say. Because majorly, um, our African mothers who uh, who are meant to be the who are meant to be the educator are not even there to educate us. Instead, they um they base their education on we girls like you have to this is how to do when you get to your husband's house like what should you have to do you have to satisfy in the process of um concern in the process of educating we girls they forgot our boys. Well, it's not the mother's duty, main duty to do that step. Okay. I don't know. What would the what would the father or the dad be doing while the mother do the educating and all? It's it's all about the the family setting. Nobody is should be excluded. Okay. Whether the father or the mother in training their kids, nobody should be excluded. That is my own mindset. Because if you as the mother is trying to let let the boy know that. This is wrong. You don't look at a lady lustfully. You learn to lower your gaze while looking at someone, while looking at a woman, while looking at a girl. You learn to lower your gaze. You learn to do things. You learn to, you learn to use your brain instead of using your groin. That means you are talking about self control or yes. re then, regulation or what? What yes, should I call it? Majorly. That means if you, if you have to talk about this, then it's not only the mother that should be doing this. The fathers, most especially, should be doing this because they should be the mentor to their boys. You know, that will, that will take us to another topic entirely. Okay. In this society, the state of AWOL, so to speak, absence okay. without leave of okay. our okay. own fathers, when we're growing up, speaking um, 10 families in this part of the world right now, we know that six of them have their fathers available but absent. Yes. You know okay. the role of a mother is to mother my kids. Yes. No one behind full housewife. I don't want to go into that full housewife. So what I saying that there is no that full father figure in the house. Exactly. I manage you, you have to be the mother of my kids, you have to be the wife. Master. So what is the father doing? Fine, you go out there to cater for the bit. But there are some emotional needs that can be that cannot be quantified with money. Mm -hmm. Not everything okay. is money, not everything is material resources. At some point, a mother can be a mother, but to mother a boy child, and a mother can be a baby. Yes. Okay. Yes. Say, um, Even to I, mother a girl child, to mother can be a baby. There are some things the father has to, to contribute to the emotional component of the girl, not of the child generally. Okay. So what we are trying to say here now is that um, the father and the mother are, are responsible for the sex education of their wards or their and children. Not the parents. Not the parents alone. alone. Yes. Okay. Because if you look at it, most part of a child's um, life is spent outside the home. Outside the home. I yes. mean, outside the home as well. Because they go to school. But well, apparently they use um how many hours in school? Last from eight to at least maybe minimum of three p.m. and maximum of now, four p.m. Now in that period of time, okay, example, okay. Now, a child that leaves home around eight a.m. comes back maybe three or four, four p.m. Okay. Now compare it to being at home within the period of that four p.m. to maybe nine or ten when they will sleep. When they will sleep, okay. They wake up again in the morning. Tell me. But, but they still have weekends though, like Saturday and Yes, Sunday. but most parents will use that weekend to do so many other also chores that has been on plan. What of during holiday no. period? Because we only, we have thirteen weeks what last on school calendar. I know. But okay. what I'm trying to say now is that it is not only the parents that should be doing this. The teachers okay, the teachers are, also in fact if looking at it very well, teachers have more more closeness to these kids than some parents. But because there are sometimes some kids don't want to talk to their parents. That is why you have to be, as a parent, you have to be your kid's best friend. I keep on saying that. You have to grow a very strong relationship with your kids so that they will be able to talk to you 
if you have a child and the child is not giving you some hints about his or her life, that means something is wrong somewhere. And yeah, before that's... you know it, these kids will get mentorship from somewhere okay, else. Okay, that's types but of parenting. Being, but you, when you are close to your kids, when they can tell you anything, when they can talk to you at any point in time, then they will be able to express some things and you'll be able to point to them, right? Like, okay, this is what is right and, and this, this is... is what is wrong. If being a teacher, you can't talk to your kids without shouting at them, without opening eyes for them, then you are doing it wrong because they will not come to you. And sometimes if you have some teachers that they, they, they look at they look at you and say, ah, oh, look at that girl. She has a very big backside and all. Your kids, the, mm -hmm. your students are learning from. Yes, your students are learning from them. They will say, okay. oh, uncle said that. Too. Why can't I say it? Okay. Oh, uncle look, please look at your uncle. Uncle look at that girl lustfully. Why can't I do that too? Okay, because so, the factors that many. It is not only parental factors. Okay. The parents have their role to play. No, the teacher role. have their role to play. The parents have a major role to play, and the society too has a role to play. Okay. If you as an individual have that mindset that okay, this thing is wrong, I have to let others know that this thing is wrong. Then the, some people else will look at you and they say, this person did it like this. For example, as a Christian, they will tell you the world is not reading their Bibles again; they are reading you. That is applicable to everybody. It is very very applicable to everybody. You are someone's Bible. You are someone's Quran. You are so you are that thing that someone looks up to and watches. That if this person can, if you look at upcoming artists and how they compete okay. with uh, those that are there, that okay, okay. So this one has like okay four baby mamas. I have to meet up to that. No, that is is society. a criteria. Yes, that is the society's mindset. But, but, uh, sorry, sorry for interrupting. Um, is there a society without a culture, or we can never live? I mean, there is no society without a culture. And can I say, is rape a culture or an initiation to manhood? Are we talk about domineering or dominary dominant figure. Yeah, uh, um, yes, I'm a man. I must show that I must show them I'm a man. Like, is there a culture or? I can't say it is not a culture actually. And it's but not an initiation to manhood. Okay. If you look at the type of rape we have, okay. you understand better. Okay, please, can you shed more light on the types of rape we have? Okay. Types of rape that we have. Well, oh, okay. Or oh, should we start from the definition of rape? I guess it is very compli complicated, complicated in nature, in concept. So, should we even narrow it down to types alone or? How should we do it? Well, rape generally, well, all of us know what it means. Okay. To a layman and even the um, Cambridge the mini. Cambridge. Okay. It's okay. All down to the uh, forceful uh, having the forced sex. Okay. Uh, okay, maybe I should put it in my answer. Having a forceful, a compelling um, intrusion. Yes, if someone's okay. private part without their consent. consent. But if we look at it very well, you know, consent too can be sought. In fact, some will tell you that it is consensual. When there is a form of threat. Okay. Yes. We have someone that says, just talk about this thing. I'll kill you. I'll kill you. That's a threat. Okay. Or do you want to? Okay, let's look at it like this. All these, our Nigerian university lecturers and all. They'll tell you if you know you want to put this particular place, you have to go down. I get that. Now, can we call? Sorry, can we call that rape? Or oh, because at the end of the day, because most of okay. these ladies are not okay with it. In fact, some of them, they, 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 they were being forced. They were being forced, like, yes. I'm doing it, but it's not coming from my it's mind. Not it's not that um, I was caught in an action, like, rape. Somebody, some people, or some men attacked me from behind, like, oh, forceful intrusion. Or, no. I know that I'm going to do this with this particular man, but I don't have a choice. That is where consent comes in. Choice, consent. Okay. In, no. the, in the case of rape, the victim do not always have choice. They have okay. Succumb. So okay. 
They don't always have choice. They have to support. So there is a concept. Yes. Okay. Yeah, so give or that will actually lead us to forms of rape or types of rape. Yes, we have okay. so many types. Um, if we keep talking about types, I believe we'll miss out some important details. Yeah, okay. there may be six types of rape, ten types okay. of rape, or even twenty. But are we capturing individual um experiences? Because um, in 2016, as of 2016, okay. uh, 174,000 cases were reported. Okay. Yes, of it. And it was noticed that only 1,000 was reported. reported and okay. out of these 1,000 that was reported, only 18.1 is having acted upon. Okay. So if we keep categorizing rape based on what we see or based on what we hear, I believe we miss out something. Okay. But I would like to say this every human being has a sense of right or wrong. Because mm -hmm. if I slap you, you know that it is wrong to do so. If I give you money without you working for it, you smile and say thank you. So there is a sense of knowing what is right and what is wrong. But one thing that has been, that has allowed rape to occur in our society is this, the justification system. We were talking about culture the other time. You know that mm -hmm. we, our culture, especially Yoruba culture, you, a Yoruba lady, so I will speak from that perspective. We believe that okay. elders cannot be wrong. So if an elder person came to report your... Imagine, someone raped your daughter, came to report your daughter of seducing uh, him and wants to ruin his marriage, and oh, she's not your daughter, start acting on that. Because that, an elderly person okay. is always right, always mostly right. right. So, it, it has a lot of individual experience. That actually, wow. um, um, I can actually re uh, remember or recollect a story um, about a Greek god. Uh, story is it a Greek story? Let me say a Greek story that there is a god, um, an antenna god. There is this particular temple, antenna temple. There is this particular man, powerful man. They call him Poseidon. Sorry, I can't actually pronounce Greek names very well. Uh, Poseidon, um, they, uh, um, he, all, he can also be called sea, the sea god. And there's a lady, Medusa. Um, uh, fortunately, Medusa was the most beautiful girl out of, uh, most beautiful lady out of the ladies. In the community, then that's in the Greek. No, <laughs> no, yeah. So, and she's always uh, like bragging about her beauty, her beauty. In short, she was raped by the sea god inside the antenna god, inside the antenna mm -hmm. temple. Instead of, uh, of, uh, of the antenna god, she punished the rapist. Medusa was punished. And what was her punishment? Her uh, beautiful hair was turned into um, serpent. Okay. Serpent. And anyone who dared to look into her eyes will immediately turn to a stone. Oh. Can you see the situation? <laughs> the rapist got away. So, okay. Uh, why why are I'm you still, dressed the way you are dressed? This is what happening. I was still in the same time. I was still like to take a look into the culture a bit. Okay. Because in Africa, Nigeria to be precise, we still have some culture that says, okay, a lady should keep herself to marriage. But there are no exceptions to rape. Mm -hmm. Okay. So the victim will be blamed for being for being raped. Yeah. Okay. There are cultures in which a thunder will strike a lady that had sex before marriage. Hmm. Not considering whether it was raped, raped or whether it was consented. And you could see it on social media there. Rape apologists record them. Why did she dress uh, decently? That Why reminds me the case of uh, the case of Bar Cat. At the uh, rapist, the way he was, okay. was smiling at the rapist. She was smiling. Why would she be going about smiling and perpetuating that the black yeah. woman around from? Why, why would she have such beautiful gestures, such captivating gestures? You could see people all around justifying that. And this is why victims don't want to open up stigmatization. Oh, that is okay. a rape. Who would marry her? Who would marry her? Will I be seen with somebody that has been raped? What if I get to? Oh, uh, you are yeah, about to get married. They'll but just trace your history. Don't put it in the world. So you can. Don't spoil our name. Don't spoil our name. So 
it, it also points to the justification system. There is no true justice of what we're uh -huh. saying and the victim gets to punish. So the victim is undergoing such experiences, bitterness, unforgiveness, and whatever that comes with it. And there's no justice. There's no justice. There is no proper justice. No proper justice. So, uh, whom should a girl, a girl call, or a lady call immediately after being raped? Is it the policeman, the doctor, um, a doctor, or a lawyer, or an elderly person in the family or the community? If you're talking about this particular society, we find ourselves uh -huh. in Nigeria, ah, that is a very dicey question to ask. Because okay. for you to go to the policeman that you are being raped, they start tossing you around. Get this, do this, do that. Yeah, we have to pull our uh, beauty to apprehend this. Are you sure this something? They will start asking unnecessary questions. If you have to call on your lawyer straight away, of course, you might get some things done, but some damages will have occurred. I would suggest, in my own view, I would suggest that if it is possible for you to call all of them at the same time, while if for example, if it's, uh, it's someone you know, if the rapist is someone you know, if it's someone you know, probably your mm -hmm. uncle, a friend, someone you are very familiar with, mm -hmm. then I would suggest you go to the policeman straight away. At least the person has the name, the person has the face. You go to the policeman, and I'm very certain that in the course of going to the policeman, if you have your lawyer with you, if you are able to afford a lawyer, if you have a lawyer, then you go along with your lawyer. And I'm very certain that going through that process, if the lawyer is someone that has sense, that is that is ethically um, up, upright, the person will know that he has to hold the policeman to their work and also seek for medical attention for the for the client. So for you to just say, let me go to the policeman straight up, so many things will go wrong. For you to say that you are going to the doctor, the doctors, especially in Nigerian. Um, health uh, center, they tell you, have you gotten a police report? report. The police? So, uh, the person must have a police report before, before, before she, report she, she once, um, once the check after you've been raped. So, okay. in this particular situation, there is no one in particular that let me just call this one, I'll call this one later. No, if it is possible for you to get a hold of them at the same time, just go ahead. And get a trusted friend. Get exactly. Get a trusted. That won't stigmatize you. Someone that will not judge you. I'm not, <laughs> not telling you where, where, where you are. You have to dress. What to happen? You have to give some like questions. Silly questions like that. Get someone that you can trust around you to help you out in this particular situation because you cannot be alone. And most especially if you are the victim and you're not thinking, ah, what would people say? You want to, you want to cover it up. You don't have to do that. In this particular age, thank God, so many people are coming up speaking against rape. Just let your voice be heard. Nah, no, we should speak out. up. Speak up. It is important for an for someone to speak up. Even if you think nobody will believe you or nobody else or some some people will stigmatize you or people will start calling you names or people will start justifying the fact or people will start judging you. Let anybody say whatever you want. Make sure you speak up. There are so many organizations, there are so many people out there that are willing to go about to help you fight your cause with confidentiality. Yes. Okay. And I suggest um rape um a rape victim to seek for help after all this probably medical and all. Even what sort of um psychological because it is oh, traumatizing. Okay, okay. It is, it is, yeah, it is traumatizing for someone to get herself intruded upon like that. Caught on aware. So because it is intrusion on your privacy. For you to get that intruded upon, that means you would have gone through so many traumatizing experiences. Okay, with all these things, um, what do you think would be the prevention thing? Okay, Something like... It's been on skyrocket for some time now and it keeps... Yes, yeah, we have to say that every thing. minute, okay. especially in... Okay, I read that in India, every minute, Rape every five call. minutes, Rape Rape call. Call. Uh, India, when so you talk about India, when you talk about South Africa... Prevention <laughs> measures, 
situations. Yeah. Like you should um both boys and girls because boys are being raped too, even though we, we Okay, so them. so what should be the proper law um for for rapists? Like I don't think there is any punishment that can justify what has been done. What has been done. But okay. at least Just we should have scapegoats like that mm. should not go unpunished. But, but okay. I would like to say kids now, after sex education, self defense is, is Oh, that's but actually when, good. When there is self defense you can de- get to defend yourself, I think to some extent. We have been talking about running, screaming, shouting for some okay, time yeah. now, but what if there is no one close to uh, okay. So you you mean self defense is very is very very exactly. um very, let's say, very very important and necessary. Be conscious of where they come. Already, yeah. Because you should try and trust your instinct too. I'm very okay. very certain that if somewhere or something is wrong for you, your still your instincts would have told you. So try and learn to trust your instincts. Learn to defend yourself. Learn to try and curtail your movements and if you are known to pass through a particular route or something try and maybe you maneuver some other ways so of the the your, your, your okay that your means way. don't be stick to a particular route okay and if you notice that there are some people or someone is telling you or something make sure you head for a well-lit area and a well-populated area at least i'm very certain that someone that has a, 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 a rational that is rational won't come about okay maybe you are missed people uh, people will get to the reason Oh, uh, uh, you've added it up for my guests and i think they are all saying they stand against all forms of rape and domestic violence i also stand against all forms of rape and domestic violence um, oh thank you i really appreciate for um you for attending to um you uh, for rubbing minds together adiola and jola day i really appreciate you once again and uh hope you won't mind coming to the show once again if invited okay so viewers um if you have anything um any information or uh, any questions to ask um thank god we have an humanitarian here and we have a counseling psychologist in the house you can always reach us on the following um number showing on the screen and please do like watch and comment comment and subscribe to our youtube channel at tcf online tv thank you all i love you